Yes, if you're new to us, you're reading the original Star Wars up on the wall. Uh, about a year ago, year and a half, I did the original Star Wars series, and it was about the battle between Lucifer, the morning star, and Jesus Christ, the bright and morning star. And, and I just basically did a quick survey through the Bible of about 10 different stops that we had. And the last lesson on that was Christ is, of course, back in heaven now. We're waiting for his return, but he's left us to be a star. He's left, left us to be a lighthouse and a shining light for him and, and to share the gospel with people. That's the church age. That's the time we live in. should be an exciting time for things of God and the work of God and the power of God. And so we, we, we looked at that. That was the le last lesson I felt the Lord wanted me to just share with you, and I dropped it, and I didn't think another thing about it. And I said, I looked back at the series, and I said, okay, thank you, Lord. That helped me a lot. I love that series. And I went on to what we did next and something else, and I've got planning others and wrote others. And then all of a sudden, I got burdened again, and I just said, I can't get this, the original Star Wars out of my mind. I said, because there's more to it, and I really thought about these trilogies that the movies are coming out with, three movies in a trilogy, and then they'll move on to the next trilogy. And I said, so... Anyway, I got this going, and Mandy was over at the house doing something, and she got gist of, she was looking at the computer or something, and there it was, and I said, yes, I'm working on another Star Wars. And she said, that's just the second trilogy then. You got to do of the two. She says, what's the third one got? I said, I'm no, no, let me, this one's not done anywhere near. But what this one is about, this is about the, uh, let me get us on here. This is the weapons of our warfare. This isn't, this isn't about the battle of Satan and, and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the battles that we fight. This is the, and these are the weapons that God gives us and has left us with and, is sh and shares with us and tells us, I empower you with these so that you can get victory in this day and age over Satan and over his demons and over wickedness in high places and in problems that come your way and discouragements and defeats and brain games that go on in your head how you don't have to get depressed and how there can be victory so these are the these are the cool things and this is our memory verse and I'd like you to say it with me again 2 Corinthians 10:4 here we go for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. All, all, if you read your Bible, you could pull out the weapons. All of the, I'm not sharing anything with you out of the seven in this series that you say, wow, that is so cool. Dick Baker, you're so intelligent and brilliant. Look, you found that. No, you, all, of, all of us can find it. It's for, it's for the simple folk like me to come across and say, yeah, there it is. Let's look at that again. And we do that. And so the first one was the power of praise. How we need to praise God with our voice, with singing, with shouting sometimes, with the glory of God and what he's done for us. And praising, praise God when you get up as David did and praise God before you go to bed as David did. Thank God and praise God for your food. Remember Carrie, little baby Carrie, our daughter when she was young, and would go around, it was her time to pray for, for, for and say great, we, we use the word grace, but to thank God for our food. And she had heard me be praying, and older sister would pray, and this was a really one of her first times. And she says, yes, yeah, I, I, my turn, you know, I want to pray. And she, she, when she, we all bowed our heads and closed our eyes, and she said, God, for food, thanks. And, and, you know, she just, she just got it. She just had a thankful spirit and a thankful heart about her and a praising thing. Okay, the next one is the Word of God. And as I shared with you last week, the Bible, the book that you have, or on your tablet, or where, however it is in written word, however it comes to you, however you have it, it's the only thing you can physically hold of these seven. You can't grab praise and just, you know, 
you know, it's not out there. You don't go to the Christian bookstore and, and pick up a box of praise. Uh, that'd be really cool. Maybe I could market. I got something to sell on eBay now. Oh, boy, and I may have some customers in here. That would be so cool. But the word of God is, is what we have, is what we grasp. And guess what? I'm not going to teach anything new today. I'm not, but I'm going to climb all over you as I climb all over me. Because we have let the word of God slip away from us. We looked at Bible 101, and the last thing we looked at, we talked a little about translations and paraphrases and the difference, etc. Could I close this by saying to you, simply put, I'm not a big one on paraphrase, but I don't condemn anybody for having a paraphrase because the word of God is quick and powerful than and sharper than any two-edged sword. And the word of the Holy Spirit of God can take the word of God in any form and fashion and touch a person's heart and change a life. But I, I tend to stick to the King James or the New King James Version. And there's some other really good translations out there. Uh, uh, they're using, uh, I'll, I'll tell you which one they're using in there and, and fill you in on that. Uh, but it reads like the King James, it's only cleaned up a little bit. The these and the thous and the stuff like that's gone. So that's a, that's a new version, a translation that's out. So anyway, we left off there. Okay, now let me give you some battle examples in the Word of God. There's, it's always good to share stories so we can see how the battles got fought and how they got won. Patton was a student of American history first and studied the battles, Washington, all the battles of the Civil War. He studied the generals, and he, got the, he, he learned battle plans, battle plans, battle plans. Then he went back and started with the Romans and learned about the Romans and how they conquered and how they got victory. And then he moved back further. He studied. He wanted to see what was the successful things and what was used to win the battles. Patton could have been a doctor of battleology. And as God's people, we, we've got the plan book. We've got the battle book. We have it, and we can read it, and we can study it and know it. But unless we put the plan to work, forget it. You can't, the, the weapon, you've, you've lost the use of the weapon. Jesus used one weapon, the word of God. But guess what? Jesus is the one weapon. Jesus Christ is the word of God. John 1, 1 through 4. Here's some Greek for you today. And uh, I like pulling over and parking sometimes on some of these, these harder passages, I want to call them. A little tricky to them sometimes. You know the passages. You can read them in the word of God. But there's some really cool stuff in there that's very important to learn. Here's, here, this, is the, this is the gospel of John just kicking off. Chapter 1 and verse 1. Bingo, we're right out of the blocks, and here we go, and it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The word beginning is not the beginning of Christ. It's not talking that Jesus has a beginning. <coughs> Christ is eternal. Christ is eternal. It's talking about in the beginning when we, in our process, in our thought life, when the beginning of the Bible, when creation all started, because we're going to get into creation here in a minute in verse 2, when it talks about all things were made by him. Well, that's, a cre that's creation. So as the, the book, at the beginning of the Bible, from the very beginning, was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The word, the, the word, word, in the Greek is capitalized, denoting a person, in this case a powerful person, Jesus Christ. And the, the Greek word there is logos, you know that word probably. And if I had to read this in the Greek to you, I would capitalize the word the too. Because it says this, in the beginning, the word, the one and only word, None other like it. No imitations. It's the original one. It says it was with God, meaning was, was with God. With is a good translation, but the Greek says also it can be toward, face to face to God the Father, or to the advantage of. 
All right, all of a sudden we're getting a little bit of interest in here because the word Jesus is going gonna, is gonna to be the word of God, the book that we carry around, and we have it for an... Say the word, it starts with A. Advantage. We need an advantage against the, the devil. We need a, an advantage against the, the, the battles that we fought. We need an edge. We've got to have an advantage. We've got to have a leg up. Because you and I can't fight Satan or demons. Hey, man, let's go get demons today. Here I come. I am Joe Cool Christian. I love Jesus, and I sing all the choruses at church, and I read my Bible, and I pray, and amen. I even say grace three times a day. You've got to get me some demons so I can drag them back to Sunday school and tell their people what I caught. <laughs> Bags full of them. Garbage. We can't do that. We have no power and no victory. So the Lord and his word word, the Bible, is our advantage. So the same was in the beginning with God. Jesus was there. All things. And this is what I like. Everything, all the planets and the air and the greenery, the animals. But get this. Here's how, here's how personal Christ is. When he created, he made each and everything. When it says all things, everything, each and everything, one at a time was important to him. That's what it's talking about. It's real easy to say, well, Jesus created everything, and then we just move on. But if you stop and think about it, you are a unique creation of Christ. He had you in mind. You're a one of a kind. You got a one of a kind. Every now and then somebody moves away from class and from church. And w when they take off and go, I just, I thank them. I pray, try to pray with them. And just that I've been so blessed by them. And um, I say, now when you get up there, you got to understand, you ain't going to find another one of me. Another class. And they, they chuckle a little bit about that. And um, it's true. I am, I'm a one of a kind too. Just like you are. And God has made us and created us uniquely. Man, that just thrills my soul to start with. And uh, to mean made means to brought into existence uh, and, and was, was just plain made by him. And actually him or himself. Emphasis on that. In him was life. He created living souls, and the life was the light of the heavenly light that surround, surrounds angels. Do you remember the, the, just the aura, the great light that angels carry about themselves in Scripture? Moses on the mount getting the Ten Commandments saw the glory of the brightness, and it blew him away. And it, it was, he was so close to God when he came off the mount, he was, a, he was just a, a ball of light carrying stones. And it scared the Israelites to death. They were frightened. They did, but he had been with God. And so just the, there's, a light, there's a light that we're to carry around with us, and that's the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. The brightness and the glory of God in our daily living and how we live for the Lord. All right, Jesus used one weapon, the word of God. And this phrase, remember this, it is written, Matthew 4, 1 through 11. And look, I make no apology for going through the temptations with you again. How many of you have not been tempted lately? Where have you been tempted today already? Yes. How about yesterday? Well, let's make this easy. Anybody not tempted this last week in some form or fashion? then we might need to see the temptations again and be reminded how Christ worked it and how he did. Then Jesus was led into, by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Ah, and when he had fasted 40 days, 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came to him and said, If you be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. He was saying, Hey, get yourself a Big Mac. It's bread. I love breads. Do you like, 
I remember my mom saying, she'd turn to me and say, son, I want you to know something. I'm a grain person. I said, what do you mean, mom? She says, and mom says, I just love breads and grains. And she said, didn't you pick that up when I go into restaurants? I just love the breads. My mom's little. She, she's five foot tall and 100 pounds. And she eats, she, made, she loves the grains. The thing was, I love the grains too. I inherit that from her, but I'm not five foot tall and 100 pounds. I'm 5'8 and way too many pounds. And he says, if you're hungry, I'll make bread. And Jesus said, it is written. It is written from scripture. Move on. The devil takes him up to the holy city and sat him on Pinnacle Temple. He said, if you be the son of God, cast yourself down. Go soaring. For it's written, and, and, uh, for it's written he'll, the angels will catch you. And Jesus said unto him, it is written, you're not going to tempt the Lord your God. And we move on. He said, unto the, he said unto him, all these things I'll give you if you'll fall down and worship me, Jesus. And Jesus said to him, get you hence, Satan, for it's written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Okay. Stop and park with me a minute, and here's the hard thing I have to say to you today. We have abandoned the word of God. We have, as much as, as, much as the, the generations below us have abandoned church, we don't read the word of God anymore. We don't know it is written. And we're getting blindsided, and we're getting beat up. The church is getting beat up. We're, our families are getting wiped out. Because the, the Bible's not out there anymore in our families. We need, to, we need to read the Word of God again. We need to pull it out. And as individuals, but collectively as God's people, we need to, and we need to, the only way we know it is written and can pull that principle out, that this is what the Word of God says. Lord, okay, today... While Shane was, was speaking, I, I already knew this morning, I wasn't physically firing on all my thrusters. I'm tired. I was tired. Now, I tried not to, t I don't tell that to people. Um, you're never to know that I, I'm weak in, at times. I never want you to know that. You don't want me to know when you are, unless you want on the prayer list. And for me to pray for you. We don't like to admit, you know, that we're not more than what we really are, even though that's what we wish. And I just, Shane was speaking today, he was talking about, land, you know, and what he was saying. And I just stopped him and I said, Lord, the only way there's going to be victory today is you need to be my strength. It is written. In your weakness, I... I'll make you strong. And a dead, tired Dick Baker can show up, but, and, but, and the good thing is, God can be glorified. Good things can come of that. And the answer is, see, when you get tired, you can get discouraged easily. Things can start eating at you, and people start getting, ir you'll get irritable to other irritable people. And then you all of a sudden, you know, we're pulling hair and beating people up verbally, and for at least in our minds. Jesus had the answer to these things. How, how, do, how did I know that God makes my weakness, it makes it strong for him? Because the scripture says it, because I knew it was in the Bible. And we need to start... We need to start not only getting in the Bible again, but memorizing key verses, and number two or three or however you want to list it. We need to start calling them up and actually applying them and calling upon the name of the Lord and praying and saying the scriptures and claiming them that God can actually do something and believe again. Not only have we neglected scripture, we don't even believe in miracles anymore. We just, we've let, we've abandoned, well, amen. They're out there. They're to be had. See, we just don't hear about them. And we need to talk about, then when we have answered prayer and we've applied scripture and good things have happened, 
That needs, you need to just be chirping about it. Think about this a minute. Every time Jesus healed somebody, what did he tell them? Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> and what did they do? The lame man went flying and jumped the Olympic record up over the fences and everything. He was leaping everything. The blind man went praising God. The dead man couldn't speak loud enough and far enough and give testimony enough of what Jesus had done that he was life. So, shh, that should not be how we should be. Let's move on. I, see, I'm, I don't get very far, do I? The devil left him, and then the angels came and ministered. Jesus has one weapon, the word of God. And John described it in, in Revelation 1.16. Listen to what Jesus said. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as, as the sun shines in his strength. Later John wrote, And I saw heaven opened, and righteousness, and he doth judge and make war, and his name is called the Word of God. That's Jesus. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. How can Christ smite and judge nations? He will do it by the book. He will open up scripture, and he'll say, you have done this, you have destroyed my people, that is written here, that Israel is, 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 is my chosen nation to be a bright and shining light, and you have attacked her, you have hurt her, and you're going to, you, look, it's all, you ignored it. You ignored it, and they will be judged by that. John himself used one weapon, the word of God. I've written to you, young men, because you're strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you've overcome the wicked one. Hmm, let me look at that a minute, and this, if I get this right. They have overcome the wicked one. They've gotten victory over Satan. Now, just how did they do that? Hmm. They put the word of God into their life. And they applied it and they used it. Paul used one weapon. Look, look at these gigantic battles, these, ba these great giants of faith and what they've done. Charlene? Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony and said, if you love their lives, not even unto Yep. Them. Yeah, these are the people that are saved during the tribulation and how they overcame. It was by the blood of Christ and the word of God that they would do that. And, and we can do the same thing. Here's Paul talking. We see then that we're called to grow up to the stage of being young men in whom the word of God abides and no longer children tossed about by every wind and wave of doctrine. And all these little weird, all these doctrines that are out there now and religious teachings. You know, at the McDonald's I go to, there's a, there's a manager there. It's a young guy. And he's, he's, he's just buzzing everywhere. And one time, uh, this has been a few months ago or something, I, I, just, I just said, uh, the Lord spoke to me, said, okay, today you start with him. Okay? And so, anyway, I got, I, I, he had a few, and actually he came over and sat down. He says, I have a few minutes, let me help you with your crossword puzzle. I don't want anybody helping me with my crossword puzzles. <laughs> You that you that do crossword puzzles, you that do crossword puzzles, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Amen. Okay, you can you can mess with my other toys and other stuff. That's fine, but leave my cro and I'm going to add one more. Leave my crossword puzzle and my Sudoku alone. You leave that alone. Okay, you leave them. I want you to know that they may, that doing those two things make geniuses <laughs> or or the insane <laughs> and so, and sometimes it's either it's it's one or the other it can go both directions so i anyway i just said you know i called, said his name and i said look you know over here um, you know this I've been praying for, for Gary, and he's about to have surgery, and he's a Christian, and he knows the Lord. And I said, what, what about you? You know, where are you? Where are you? Where are you in, with Christ? Where are you? Do you go to Sunday school? Do you do anything? And 
the, the statement back was, you yeah, know, my parents, when I was little, I went, made me go a couple times. And they said, but they didn't go. They just dropped me off. Eventually, they just didn't want to bother to do that. And I said, well, what do you believe? Everybody believes something. What do you believe? And he says, well, I, I definitely believe in God, but my God is not spelled G-O-D. Mine's sort of, he says, the way I sort of got is these little electrical things floating around in a spiritual world. Like, it's almost, I, what, how I surmise it was brain nerves and activity or light, little lightning things going around. And he says, that's about as far as I've got it for right now. But I do believe in a, I do believe in, you know, a, an intelligent being of some kind out there. But this is some kind of a lightning neuron, something God like that. Okay, it's very important to understand before these people, if you're going to try to spend some time winning them to Christ, you you got to be prayed up and you got to live right too. You can't go in there and be crabby. You can go to another McDonald's and get crabby. <laughs> but not the one that you're, you're doing there. So, um, am I way back to the beginning already? Here we go. Paul used one weapon, the, the sword of the Spirit. Okay, here's the whole armor of God. And you know, within the armor of God, the weapon... The offensive thing is, is, only the, is only the sword. Helmets and breastplates and our feet shod and a shield. It's all defensive stuff so we don't get hurt. We need to have that on, but that's not a weapon of our warfare. That's defense stuff. The, the true weapon to go into battle is the sword of the Word of God. And catch this. The word sword here, there's two, two words for sword in the Greek. And the Romans had both kinds of swords. One of them is that huge big one where you just plowed through. It's the army lines up and the opposing army lines up and they come at each other. And the big sword, the big, the big husky guys pull out the big swords and they just are clearing the path doing that. And it's heavy and it's hard. It just knocks things out of the way and knocks down. Right behind them comes the guys with the small swords. That's for the close-up battle. That's where it really, really matters. Okay, now get this. If we come to church, our pastor, whoever does the preaching, he swings the big sword. He swings the big sword. When I get when I am come in here to you, you ABF teachers, you get a crowd, I swing a big sword. Trying to clear a path so that you, as God's people and I can we can leave out of here with the small sword, and I've given you, the, I've given you the, the tools to go out and, yes, clear the path, but the battle that really gets fought is the up-close battle with the little sword. It's the one-on-one -on -one business. It's the mind games that Satan plays with us and deals with us. It's the discouragements. It's the little things. Our biggest battle is in here. They're right in here in our heads. And that's where it goes on. And that small sword is for that. It's up close. The Spirit is, of course, the Holy Spirit. And the Word's the same one as John 1. Look at 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verses 16. Seven. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. And the word all there means any, each, and all, every little bit of Scripture, every preposition, all, every and, conjunction, every small word that you come in there, it, if it's a small little word here, it's connecting a greater thought, but they're all profitable. Every word, every verse in the, in the Bible is, has profit to it. The word doctrine is Bible teaching and instruction. It's the hard stuff. It's the in-depth stuff. If you, went and, if you went to a Bible college or went to a seminary, you would take doctrine classes and you would learn bibliology. You would lead learn Christology, the doctrine of Christ. You would learn pneumatology, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Soteriology, the doctrine of salvation. 
Christ's and uh, Satanology, you would learn, or angelology, you'd learn all about the angels and about Satan and about demons. You would study the in-depth stuff. Bibliology would be the study of the Bible. When I did the first Star Wars with you, I did angelology and eschatology. Those were the two main doctrines that that whole thing made up. This one on the battles and the weapons of our warfare is more about bibliology, what the Bible is telling us and gives us and lays out for us and so that we can use and win victories and do cool stuff. So anyway, I'm, I'll finish with this today and next week I finish the lesson Okay, on this one. And we'll move to number three. It's prophet, so that's doctrine, but within the doctrine, the word of God is good for reproof. That's which has been tested and proven and develops conviction in our life. We run into a brick wall. Um, okay, our daughters, when they were learning to ride their bikes, um, they got in their bike, and what did they do? They get on, I'd push them, and ah, boom. I never figured out how a kid, when they actually were on the bike and they were going, they were going there in balance, but they didn't know that I was holding on on the back and walk, run alongside them. And, they, and all of a sudden they said, Daddy, Daddy, I'm right. you're doing good. You can let go. And I'm, I'm 100 feet behind them. I said, I did long ago. And then, oh, boom, you know. <laughs> they just couldn't hang on to it. Well, that's what this is teaching us. It, get, it corrects us and builds determination, conviction in us. Correction is restoration or improving our life. Sometimes we need corrected. You got a bad attitude. Huh? Why would you say that to me? You have a bad attitude. Well, I didn't before I came, but I got one now. Because you said that. And that sometimes we need corrected. Well, I'm the adult. Now, that might be the problem. Maybe we need to be the adult. In instruction, it's the entire training of the child of God. Scripture. It, next week, it will not matter what the pastor opens up in the Word of God. He's going to do something with the family. I don't know whether he's going with the text or whatever. But it's going to be instruction to help correct and make corrections. <coughs> Righteousness, so that we live right, so that they're the right kind of person. That we can be mature, a complete person and fitted for the work of God. Actually, the word fit, furnished, means not so much complete, it means fitted first. And it means fit. We are in, a, our nation is in a gym craze, a fitness craze. They build, they've got bike paths going down our major roads. And they're out there, they're all out there. And then there's the, then they've, they've, they've got the runners going. Just go to a gym at five in the morning. They're, they're all on there. Before they go off to work, they're getting fit. We have gotten, we are so out of shape as God's people. And I'm not talking the gym, I'm talking the, the, the Bible gym. To get into it, because it will get us fit, it will get us complete. It'll, man, all of a sudden, wow, I'm feeling pretty good now. I got to stop there. I get too wound up with this and the time. Who stole the time from me? This is pathetic. Okay, I have a, I have, um, and I 